<laughs> All right, I'm going to introduce Larry Swanson for today's topic of GUII uh, content strategy. Larry is the host of the Content Strategy Interview Podcast and founder of the DIY Content Strategy. Of DIY, DIY Content Strategy. It's your company? Uh, yes. Yeah. He contributes to the WordPress project on a community team and is trainer on the diversity outreach team. Thanks very much. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Coming on this nice Saturday morning in Seattle. Um, so, content strategy is. I'm, I'm hoping to make the case this morning that uh, it's it's more important than you think, and that you should uh, care and worry about it more. More to the point, I'm going to give you uh, some tools to uh, actually do it. Um, that's kind of the point of this whole talk. So, anyhow, so stay tuned. Uh, now, content strategy raises a lot of questions. Uh, my first question is, who the heck is here? As I've talked uh, about this project, hey David, um, I've, uh, I've, I've come to discover there's kind of three main audiences that who've expressed interest in this DIY approach to content strategy. So, um, first are agencies and developers, designers, people who make websites for other people. Now, how many people here would identify like that, to make websites for other folks? Good. Almost a majority. Um, how many people are website owners, bloggers, publishers, people who publish a website to promote their business? Great. And there's this other category I've identified, <clears throat> I think of as accidental content strategists. You're the project manager, the marketing manager, the, the UX person who's like, oh, David, he can do the website, he knows about WordPress. Uh, how many people would identify like that? You're sort of tasked on the fly with, with managing and wrangling content. Okay, good. So we've got a good mix of, of all the different types of uh, folks you might be interested in. I'm curious, are there any other people, though? Anybody who would identify um, not in one of those groups? Um, way in back, what do you guys do? Yeah. IT students. Oh, okay. Like education? Okay, great. Thanks. Um, so, whoops. So why do you even need content strategy in the first place? That's the, the first question about this. I, the, if you come at there's a number of perspectives to look at it. First, if you're a consumer of content nowadays, you're facing a fire hose of information. I mean, it's just coming at you from all over the place. And the content that you're putting out there is just adding to that fire hose. So you want to be strategic and thoughtful about that, I would argue. Um, consumers are distracted. <laughs> They've got a lot of other things to worry about. Uh, plenty of other stuff they could be reading or doing. Um, if you're strategic about your content, it's easier to catch their attention and grab and, grab and hold their attention. Um, if you're a content creator, you know, coming up with ideas can be hard. Um, and like, having a good content strategy in place can help you with that. Also help you with uh, having a good content, uh, you know, an editorial calendar is one of the features of a content strategy. Just having a plan and a calendar and reasons in place can help you kind of set deadlines and then, of course, that adds another level of stress, but at least things happen when you have deadlines. Um, if you're a content uh, Neater, like if you're designing, developing websites for other people, the content can look like this giant obstacle to what you're trying to accomplish. It's like, where the heck is the client content? Um, and um, it's that thing that keeps you up at night worrying about, like, oh crap, we're launching in a week and I don't have the client's content yet. Um, so what do you do? Laura Mips, right? I just want to put an end to that forever. I just saw, I have it ready, I just saw a headline this morning for a title. A uh, blog post entitled The End of Laura Vipson. I'm hoping it supports what I'm about to say. Um, I want to preface this next slide by saying that uh, this comes from a leading authority in the content strategy world, one of the original kind of founders of the discipline, an important person, a delightfully snarky Midwestern kind of approach, which I, kind of, I appreciate and enjoy. But I want to say that this is like, I, I want to take everybody to task for being better about content strategy, but Christina Halverson at Brain Traffic has done, I think, the best look at it for, for, um, uh, for people who build sites for other people. So what she says is like, typical web agency proposal, proposal, blah, 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 discovery, design, development, blah, 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 client will be responsible for everything content. And she says, stop it! Do content strategy, it's not 2004. And what she's getting at is that it's sort of like, and then this gets into some of the concepts we'll talk about later, but if you're doing a website, you're, you guys all know this, you're doing a website for an intent, for a marketing intent or a business intent of some kind. Um, and it's, it's, even if you're, not just, even if you're not a content strategist, but are designing, developing, or otherwise building websites for people, um, I would argue that you want to, 
you know, I'm not as not as vociferous about it as Christina Halverson is, but she's way more authoritative than I am, so trust her. Anyhow, but I would argue, argue that we should all be doing content strategy, even if you just even if you're an individual, like a solo professional, and you just have one social media feed. You want to be strategic about that. Um, there's a lot of business reasons to be strategic about content. So, how many people in here have an unlimited budget, unlimited staff, and resources to create content? Not a single hand. One guy in Vancouver a couple weeks ago actually raised his hand, and I was like, what? And so, uh, no, in Portland, I'm sorry. Anyhow, so you want to be a diligent steward, a good shepherd of the scarce resources that you have. And by being strategic about your content, that's one of the, the main benefits of, of having a content strategy. You want to focus. I mean, having a focus to your content efforts is crucial. You know, back to that thing about the distracted consumer. You've got to be, you've got to be focused both on what they need, what you have to offer, and kind of content strategy can help you bring that focus to your content efforts. You, again, back to the distracted guy with pouring his orange juice in his bowl of cereal, you need to get that person's attention. One of the best ways to do that is to show your uniqueness. We all have something unique. You better have something unique, or you, you might as well not be on the web, because the you know SEO, everything is so much more difficult now. And so having a good top content strategy in place can help you demonstrate that unique uh, set of skills, attributes, values, and things that you bring to the table that'll get people to appreciate your business more. Um, finally, from a business perspective, content strategy is like this Swiss army knife of, of, of business intent. Like if you're running an SEO campaign, that's all about content. Now content marketing obviously is all about that. Uh, if you're doing trying to serve your customers better, anything that involves serving your customers probably has, or almost certainly has a content element to it. And so, and so having a content strategy mindset gives you this nice little Swiss army knife you can pull out whenever, whatever it is you're doing and uh, bring that to bear. Um, another question that comes up about content strategy all the time is just this word content. Like I'm an old school publishing journalism guy and it just, content, it's so demeaning and uh, kind of vague and, and, and generic. Um, I've come to peace with the term content and for a few reasons. First of all, it's a good label to identify the unique kinds of you know, words and images and recordings and search results, whatever it is you're, the, whatever the content is you're, 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 the information you're dealing with, content is a good label for this um, kind of digitized stuff that we're dealing with now. And the ensuing kind of complexity and interconnectedness of that content is really what makes a, a, a field like content strategy necessary. When I was in publishing 20, 25 years ago, you didn't need a content strategy, you just published books. Nowadays, and similarly, you know, journalists did their thing, radios did their thing. Now we're all multimedia on the channel publishers. We've got to figure this out. We need a content strategy. Um, so it's that digitization of it and the complexity of it that makes it feel that, that, that makes that term content. Anyhow, that's why I've come to peace with it. I'm, I'm not uh, cranky about it anymore. The other way to look at uh, content is Karen McGrain, the other godmother, and sort of the original godmother of the field of content. Strategy, a Philadelphia-based uh, content strategist. She says that content is the gift. You know, if you're publishing a website, people, and, you know, unless you have like a, a code repo or a design portfolio, people aren't coming to your site to admire the code or the way the thing works or to um, uh, or to admire your design. They're coming to learn something, to do something, to achieve a, an intent. And content is what does that. So content is the gift inside of that beautiful website you're designing and that beautiful functionality that you're crafting. Um, finally, content is that message, and this comes out of like marketing communications, and just top level communications in general. It's both the top level messaging of what you have to say, again, how you're conveying your values and your unique value proposition to the community. Um, it's that, and it's also all of the individual messages that you have to say. So that manifests in a gazillion ways. You have a website, you have a blog, you have um, your YouTube channel, your podcast um, uh, feed, your uh, social media feed for on Facebook or Twitter. Um, so again, that's those are a few ways to look at content. It's like this digitized, complex thing that needs to be strategized about. It's a gift that you're giving to your customers, and it's a, a thing that manifests in a bunch of different now that leads to the question of what the heck is content strategy? Uh, I set out about a year, just over a year ago, to, I've, I've been a digital publisher for 
uh, since 95, or 23 years. Um, and I got tired of explaining to people what a publisher is and what a publisher does. <laughs> it's like, forget it, I'm done with that conversation. Don't, you know, if we talk, don't ask me about that. No, I actually, I'm, seriously, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it, but just not to explain my whole professional existence around that. <laughs> so I re-identified as a content strategist. And the first thing I discovered, I started talking to a bunch of people, and everybody thought of content strategy as a different thing. And I was like, uh-oh, is this like community or wellness? There are these other words that are just like these vague, agglomerative things where you can dump a bunch of stuff. And I thought, no, I have a feeling there's something more to this. So I pulled out my reporter's notebook. My original training was as a journalist, so kind of put on my reporter hat. And um, set out to kind of demystify and understand uh, what the heck content strategy is. So what I just got, I, went out, I read every book I could find. I looked at every online reading list uh, that was out there. I um, uh, listened to every podcast that was out there. Then I created my own podcast, the Content Strategy Interviews. I uh, now interviewed, is Andrea Zollner in here? No, she's not. Anyhow, Andrea was my 34th interview. Uh, I did uh, 34 interviews last year on content strategy. Um, I took a bunch of online courses. Uh, Lynda.com has a great course on content strategy. There's a bunch of other ones out there. I um, went to Confab, the big, sort of the definitive canonical uh, content strategy conference and a bunch of other events. I joined the local uh, content strategy uh, meetup organization. So I just immersed myself in this. And I looked at every chart, diagram. Like, if you want to be a professional content strategist, there are a gazillion ways to understand, like, as a professional practitioner, how you fit into the enterprise and the, and the projects that you're working on. Probably best exemplified by this. Um, this is from uh, Christina Albertson's outfit, Brain Traffic, in Minneapolis. This is their famous quad which actually has five elements, but that's another thing. Um, but uh, <laughs> of, of, of the, 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 uh, the elements of, of content strategy. So if you want to be a professional content strategist, you, know, you can do what I did, send, spend six months or a year, just go out and you know, explore, take some classes, do a bunch of reading. And I feel, you know, and through those interviews, I realized, look, and well, that's the thing. One of the things I learned in these interviews is that everybody comes to content strategy from, the, from a different angle, perspective, background, and so I was typical in that way of people who identify as content strategists. I have this kind of weird publishing, you know, digital media, but any, anyhow, everybody has a story like that as they come into content strategy. Um, so yeah, so that, that left me with the question, like, great, if I can figure this out, um, well, actually, at the end of that process, as I was figuring this out, I was like, well, this is fine and dandy, but um, as I started talking to my friends, I have a lot, a ton of friends who are like, run small development design, uh, you know, kind of marketing agencies, people who run their own websites, uh, people have small businesses that have a website associated with it. They don't, they're never going to have an extra six months <laughs> later on to go out and learn this stuff. They're never going to have the budget to hire somebody like me uh, to do this for them. Um, so I was like, is there, oh, and so what I, then the next thing I discovered was like, well, wait a minute, as I look at all this stuff I've learned, it's not rocket science. This is, there's a whole, string of activities, and that's what I began to wonder about. Is there a way that I could string these activities together into an actionable list of, 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 of ex executable steps that anybody with kind of a modicum of business sensibility could do? And it turns out the answer is yes. The content strategy is not this mysterious, amorphous thing that I first thought it was a year ago. It's a totally doable activity that anybody can do. So. Going to do a whirlwind tour of how to do that. I can't teach you the whole thing right now. There are people who spend, you know, there are people who have jobs doing one little tiny aspect of this full time. But I'm going to give you an overview of it. But the other thing about it is that it can be executed at any number of levels. You can spend an afternoon at your kitchen table sketching out a content strategy and be better off for doing that using these same steps as like a big enterprise like uh, Airbnb. They have like, I don't know, 80 people in their content strategy office just here in Seattle, and that's a branch office. So this scales nicely. And that kind of gets at the point that one of the things that several of my interviewees and I've discovered as I talk to other content strategists is that everything in this world is bespoke. It's all custom tailored to your individual, you know, to whatever, to wherever it, wherever it is you're applying your content strategy. It's going to be unique. So, so as I go through these steps that are coming up, just realize that some of these will be things you can tick off in two minutes, and some of these will be things you have to take a deep dive on. You might do it in a slightly different order in your organization. Some of the work may already have been done in your organization. But I want to show you sort of 
like the, the stages uh, that, that, in, that uh, are involved in a typical content strategy. So, let's get to that. Oops. Um, the first stage is discovery. You want to figure out, and we're going to go into more detail about these each in just a minute, but I just want to quickly outline the overview of the process of content strategy. First, you have a discovery phase. Like, everybody does this, like, who are you? What are you doing? What's your business intent? What do your customers need? Uh, what kind of resources do you have to spend on this? So you, you, and the culmination of that is you figure out what your content mission is. Um, then you, take, then you take that information, figure out a plan, a strategy, for getting from where you are and that desired state that you've imagined in setting out your, your, uh, your content mission. Then you want um, governance. Uh, is a, it's one of these terms, like, it's, you can think of it as like documentation. Um, but you want to have a plan in place to make sure that this beautiful art strategy that you've articulated actually happens. Then you get into the fun stuff. You design your content. Now, content design is way different from graphic design or information architecture or other disciplines. Uh, it's a, and we'll talk in more detail, detail about that. Then you build your content creation system, and then you publish. Now, this I want to point out here, this is like with the famous five-minute WordPress install, you can, six minutes from now, be publishing. Um, I hope I can make the case that you want to do these other five things before you get to that stage. So uh, that's my hope, anyway. Uh, one, of the, one of my interviewees called um, that kind of activity random acts of content. So let's commit to more <laughs> random acts of content. Um, and then finally, you need to manage the whole, the whole shooting match, the whole process. So <clears throat> excuse me. let's go through each of those in a little more detail. There's sort of several steps to each of these. And these are articulated, by the way. I'll, I'll point that out at the end. But these are all, you don't need to take notes. These are all articulated um, as a checklist on my website. Just go to DIYContentStrategy.com. And you can grab this. And that's licensed like, with a Creative Commons share and share alike. Just like the GPL, you can take it, do what you want with that, that checklist as you incorporate it into your stuff. Um, so the discovery uh, stage has a number of steps. The first thing, and this came up over and over again as I've researched the field, content strategy is about 90% about people. You know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of writing to be done, a lot of content to be created, a lot of things to be done. But it's all done by people. And, um, you, and you, you need to be attentive to them at every stage um, in your content strategy. So the very first step is you want to get uh, connected with your stakeholders. You know, the people writing the checks for your budget, the people who are going to be creating the content, the people who are consuming it. There's a whole bunch of it, and again, this is going to be different in every organization. But you want to figure out who is affected in any way uh, by, or can affect in any way, your content uh, efforts uh, and get a hold of them. You want to discover your why. Uh, why are you even doing this? And that's sort of like at a very high top level, um, I forget the, the business guru, who's the um, good to great guy? Um, Anyhow, there's a business Jim guru that, Collins. pardon me? Jim Collins. Jim Collins, thank you. But I think that you're yeah. asking about, ah, yeah. it's not correct. Yeah. The other guy who's getting to your why. Simon. Oh, Simon Sinek, yeah. yeah. Simon Sinek is the classic. Uh, yeah. Has everybody seen that video? Um, Simon Sinek did the, it's, it's the second most viewed uh, TED talk of all time. And it was filmed right here in Seattle, it was recorded uh, years, about 10 years ago. And Simon Sinek says, people don't buy what you do or how you do it. They buy stuff because of your why. They use, he uses the example of Apple. Like, you, you don't, this is a great computer, blah, blah, blah. It's got all these features. And uh, we do it, we build it this way because we're craftspeople or whatever. And then what, you want to buy one? And he goes, no, this is the correct way to do it. Like, we're Apple. We think different. You think different just like us. You want to buy one of my computers? You can kind of glimpse the power of why right in there. Um, so anyhow, so you want to discover your why. And you can do that with like values, clarifications, things. Yeah. Are you talking about the stakeholders' why? You're, you're, so this, this gets a little tricky, and we can do questions, more questions that are deeper about this again, but in terms of this, it's like the why of your current initiative. Now this gets into the kind of the, uh, the fractal nature of content strategy. I would argue that every organization now should have a chief content officer who's looking at everything from website, microcopy, and app alerts to the knowledge base. You know, the, do you have any others? That's just my you know, perspective on this, but but content strategy can manifest at a whole bunch of different levels. It can be an SEO campaign, it can be a content marketing campaign, it can be a social media campaign. There's a whole bunch of different places it can, can roll out. You want to figure out the why for your current scope. Does that make sense? You're talking okay. about the client's why. Well, yeah, the intent of the, of the effort. Right, yeah, the client, if you're working with the client. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, in the discovery yeah. phase, you're talking to your client. Yeah. You're trying to get on the 
or you're, if you're your own client, then it's your why. Exactly. So yeah. Like yeah. The why, the intent of the content effort that you're doing. Yeah. 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 And then you want to get clear on your business model. Um, I think, yeah, I've been doing this a long time, and even to this day, I'm still, there's kind of like three main business models. You can be a publisher, you can be publishing content for its own use. You can be a commerce, a merchant, a commerce uh, site, you know, selling stuff. You can be a marketer, you can market. There's a lot of other flavors, there's all kinds of a variety of each of those. But um, you just want to be super clear on what your business model is, and also what your business goals are. Like why, you know, what's your current, and this kind of gets back to your question about the scope, of your why, like what is your current mission? What are the current business goals you're trying to get there and how is content gonna support that? <coughs> and this, it's number five here, but it should really be number one all the time, is identifying your customer's needs. And there's, you know, there's, and that's different from what they say they want most of the time. <laughs> you know, you, so you have to do some work, some research, some cogitation, trust your intuition. There's all kinds of things that, that go into that. But um, like we never would have had these iPhones, you know, if Steve Jobs was just trying to figure out how to make a better way to listen to music or take pictures or something. Um, so being being a little bit visionary um, about wants versus needs. But at the same time, if you're just satisfying stakeholders, anyhow, being clear on what the, the, the needs of your customers are, are um, is going to uh, make any content effort better. And then at the end of this stage, this is where you can say, here's my intent, here's what I want to do with this content. The strategy phase is where you turn that into a plan for realizing that content vision. Um, so taking those goals that you, those business goals that you have, you, assign specific uh, business goals to, the, to your content effort. And then you want to, I would argue, there's other ways to do this, but I would argue you want to set KPIs. Uh, does everybody know what a key performance indicator is, a KPI? If you don't, it's, you just Google it. It's a, it's a great little tool for um, kind of focusing your, your, your management and tracking efforts. Um, but it gives you just a few specific things to watch for to see how you're progressing towards your business goals. Then the classic thing you want to do is then you inventory what you have. You kind of have this vision, then you take a look at what you have. If you're building a site from scratch, that's nothing. You know, so you can build it out from the get-go. But most of the time, you'll have some existing content that you're trying to build out. Um, then you audit that content against those goals and those KPIs. Like, how is it doing? Um, you know, are we achieving? Or you know, in, in, in during a little secret of content strategy, everything happens in spreadsheets. So you have this audit spreadsheet that you've done. And then you just add columns, basically, with what it is you're looking to, to measure against. Then you look at the gaps between what that audit reveals, what your goals are, and then you come up with a plan, you know, a concise content strategy. There's a whole bunch of a sort of Mad Lib-looking uh, formats out there for crafting a content strategy. Kind of like, you know, you see this in the business startup world where they, um, you know, write like a... Anyhow, that, that there's sort of a number of templates you can do to get to that, uh, to articulating your content strategy. And then the governance plan, like I said before, this is like it used to manifest like this, like a row of binders on a shelf. I'm guessing it's probably going to be digital these days. Um, but again, remember content strategy is 90% about people. So the first thing in the governance stage, you want to identify your owners and deciders. The people who have the end authority so that if you hit an obstacle or, or need a decision made, you know who these people are ahead of time. I've seen people get bogged down with lack of clarity around that, but being clear on who the important people are. Uh, is, is an, important stage, an important step there. Um, you want to create your guiding documents. You've got an idea by this stage of, of you know, what, you know, why you're going to do things. You have policies around stuff, how you're going to do it. You might have some procedures manuals and things like that. You want to articulate your style. And this typically manifests as like a, both a grammatical and a usage kind of guide. And there's tons of those. Like you can just adopt like the AP style guide or the Chicago manual. But there's tons of online ones that like 18F and companies like that do that you can just grab and adopt for yourself. Um, and the other thing you want to have is like a voice and tone guide. And this kind of goes with your, anyhow, this is, it's like MailChimp is the classic example of that. You know when you're on MailChimp, they just have this distinct way of communicating. That's, and that comes right out of their voice and tone manual. Um, I don't really like the way I phrase this, but I couldn't come up with better language. Um, but establish compliance standards. This basically just means getting the people who've agreed to what you're doing to do what they said they were going to do. <laughs> you know, and uh, so having a way to take yourself and your team to task if things get stuck, uh, and and just referring back to your style guide, your guiding documents. You know, this this should be a, a hopefully an emotion-free um, uh, thing. 
And then you want to just gather all of your governance documents, have them someplace where people can refer to them uh, as, they're, as they're going along. Now we get into the fun stuff, designing your content. And like I said before, designing content is um, it's different from other kinds of design you might have done, like graphic design or information architecture or relational database design or things like that. Um, and this, it starts with a messaging architecture. And this goes right back to that why that you did in your discovery phase. Like, why are we doing this? What's the top level message? Again, kind of like, it kind of tracks right back to that why um, exercise in that often you'll just have a list of adjectives that uh, is, or about, like, uh, describe um, what you're doing. But you have a clear kind of framework to hang all of your subsequent individual message up, messages on. Then you want to figure out your distribution channels. This is, you know, for the web, it's like, yeah, you publish the web page, you promote it. There's, there's a whole bunch to that. And then the, the meat of this stage, of the design phase, is first you design your content for your, you design the types of content that you're going to do for your users. And I would argue that this is best done just in good old-fashioned HTML. You just create semantically meaningful outlines of what it is you're trying to get across. Then you want to model your content to understand the relationships between it. Just like your kind of uh, mind map kind of thing on a butcher block paper on your kitchen table is usually good enough for that. And then you want to structure your content for multiple uses. And this has more to do, this gets down into the technical meat of it. Um, but you want to kind of, uh, another thing that Karen McGrain, the, the original godmother of content strategy says, she's articulated the difference between chunks and blobs. That like in content strategy, you always want to be thinking about chunks, not blobs of content. But you don't want to get too chunky, uh, then you get off into the nerdy world of data and things like this. But, um, but uh, you want to have just the right size chunk. So you want to give that some thought to how you're going to have, you know, the typical example would be like, this looks great in this two, two column layout on my desktop, but when, how, does it, how does it fold into a one column thing? You want to structure content so that, that's, that that and similar activities are easy to do. What do you mean by model? Just define that term. Oh, the, um, sorry. Um, model, just modeling, uh, you know, the, the relationships between okay. them. So it's like a diagram of how your content fits together. Like a, yeah. Um, then you want to build your content operation. Like if it might look like a movie studio, it might look like a radio uh, uh, station, it might look like a newspaper, it might look like a multimedia crazy mix of things. Whatever the kind of content you're creating, you, you have a, you, you build your um, your operation, um, and this again you know, so we're we're at Word, Word Camp <laughs> talking about WordPress, and we're pretty far down in here where we're talking about this is where you pick your CMS. At this point, you have an idea of what you build, what you design, and how it needs to be got, put out to the world. Um, pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, God, there I go. Uh, content management system, and WordPress would be considered a content management system. There's dozens of other ones out there, but. Um, yeah, WordPress has a lot of market share. That's why we, uh, I focus on it here. But there's others at Drupal, we have an Oracle for Zoom, and uh, Joomla, and there's a whole bunch of other open source ones and a gazillion proprietary ones. Things like Wix and Weebly and Squarespace and things like that. Um, and then you assign publishing roles, again, mostly about people. You figure out who's going to write the con who's going to assign content, make a content assignments, who's going to write it, who's going to create it, who's going to edit it, who will be the subject matters that uh, vet it for accuracy, uh, who will be the who do your final production on it, all that stuff. You, you, you want to assign publishing roles so you know who's doing what. And then you want to stitch those people together in workflows, like um, figuring out. And this, again, a lot of this stuff, like it's, you can design this and plan this ahead of times, but you'll often find a lot of this stuff is pretty iterative. You'll go back and go, yeah, that's not working right. We really need the subject matter expert to look at it before we have, you know, whatever your considerations are. But, but these are things you, you want to do. And then at the end of this, you'll have a content calendar. You'll have, you'll have a publishing plan. You'll say, okay, we know what we want to do. Now when are we going to do it? Now let's publish. And uh, so in the publishing world, first, the first thing you might have if you're doing um, a uh, redesign or a, a project where you're um, uh, taking information out of an old content manager, another CMS, or even another WordPress installation, you'll have a content migration. So that may be uh, a consideration. You might have old content that you can just dump in, so you have a head start, you'll have a bunch of content to start with. But the main ongoing activity in publishing is uh, you'll create your content, or, or you might uh, repurpose it, you might, um, you know, however you source your content, there's a lot of different ways to get it. You want to end up with your content, then you produce it, you get it gussied up for the, and this gets back to that 
you know, digital and complex nature of content, you want to have it, um, you know, stitched together with maybe taxonomies or um, uh, the way you designed it, a whole bunch, of, but you want to have your uh, production team make sure that you're doing it right before it goes in there. And then you distribute it once it's in there and approved and ready to go, you can get it out to the world. And it's really not done until you promote it. You know, that in this distracted, noisy world, um, your job isn't done when you get published. It's just starting when you get published. You get, it's like, if you build it, they will come, has never been true. And it's never been less true than it is right now. Uh, you, you gotta, so I would argue that it's incumbent on you to um, promote your, your, as a steward of your content. Um, and that may mean, back to the stakeholder thing, making sure you have a good relationship with the social media team. Um, or whoever handles your social media for you to make sure it's out there, or, or your email, whoever, if a different group does the email marketing stuff. Anyhow, just making sure that your, uh, the word is out uh, about your content. And that goes, and going way back before that, you want to make sure you've done everything to optimize for SEO at every stage of the game. Um, that's one of those things that should be baked into any project, like accessibility or you know, SEO. It should be the two things that are baked in from the start in any project. Um, and then you need to manage the whole enterprise. You want to look at your content performance, like how's it doing against those KPIs that you've set up. There's also like a qualitative element to a lot of content publishing that can be difficult to communicate, like with people who are writing checks for <laughs> budgets and things like that. But you, you want to have, you want to be aware. You know, for example, things like SEO and content marketing are really long plays, and it's hard to measure, you can't measure click for click a relationship between the content you've created and the impact it has on your business. So you want to be aware that there's both quantitative and qualitative things to, to evaluate. Then you want to review those results and, and report to your stakeholders. And this is where those awkward conversations, they're not awkward, but just the you know, uh, conversations about ROI will come up. Uh, because that's a thing that comes up over and over again. There's these two competing things I see all the time. Tight-fisted budgeters over here and SEO and content marketing ex experts over here saying, you need to be doing 10 times as much as you're doing right now if you want to have any impact out there. And I'm like, how do you reconcile these? Like, you know, if you guys have secrets about how to reconcile those, I'm, I'm all ears. Um, and then you, uh, these insights and these evaluations, you'll uh, want to revise, remove maybe some content. Um, one of the guys I interviewed for my podcast was uh, Jerry McGovern. Does anybody know who he is? He's a, he's a, he's a real kind of super nerdy guru about... Um, uh, he, was, I, he originally came to my attention about 10 years ago when I was doing a lot more SEO. He talked about customer care words. He now focuses on key task accomplishments. So he works with like big Fortune 500, literally Fortune 50 companies. And uh, anyhow, a lot of times his work will result in removing like as much as 90% of the content on a site. So, um, so that's one of the outcomes that can come from this kind of review of stuff. And then ultimately, you know, this whole thing is a big cycle. You may need to come back and revise and review your whole content strategy and your, and your plan. Now, I want to stitch this together a little bit differently. You know, as a list, it's just like blah, 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 you know, list, 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 list. So let me put it together in a little different way. If you take the discovery, strategy, and governance stages, that's sort of your strategy phase. That's where you're figuring everything out, what you're going to do. Um, the design, build, and publish stages, that's sort of the implementation. That's where it all the rubber hits the road, you're actually doing stuff, you're acting on, on your plan. And that's the implementation phase. And then the management, that's just your ongoing administration, like you know, however you run things in your business or with your clients or how you, you manage stuff. But once you've got it mapped out like this, you see that like the first two parts of each of those first stages are um, they're, they're typically more like projects, like one-off things that you'll do here and there. Um, whereas the second stuff, the governance and publishing, that's just your ongoing uh, kind of day-to-day -day operation. And over time, that governance stuff kind of shifts into the background just a little bit. It's just something you refer to. And mostly what you're doing is running a publishing operation. Um, and so anyhow, so, that's, so this is, comes right back to me trying to get away from publishing. I'm like, oh crap, I'm right back in it. Um, <laughs> so, um, so anyhow, so that's, does that model make sense? Does that, yeah, does that help you? Because to me, as I, as I started looking at this, I was like, man, there's a lot going on here. And all the people who've written about it to this point, it's been sort of, like I know if I had a job doing this, I'd know how to do it. But if I didn't know how to do it, how the heck would I get it accomplished? And I, anyway, that's my intent of this whole project, is to hopefully help you guys um, incorporate content strategy. And so that's, that gets into the next thing I want to talk about, is the application of this. Like, um, that, that, that uh, checklist that I created is at DIYContentStrategy.com. 
And like I said, you can just go grab that, do what you want with it, kind of intermesh it with your, the way you operate, and the, the, everybody has, and, and most of you are probably doing 80, 90% of this already. You know, the, the, like I'm looking at Mark Root Wiley as I say that. Uh, I know from talking to him, I'm like, he's like, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. But I think even he would have some appreciation for the, the, the strike, you know, like looking at it this way. And, and um, so anyhow, you can uh, just grab that checklist, do what you want with it, kind of incorporate it into your uh, things. I'm pers that you can, and like I said, you can take that checklist, and if you're a small business person that has no time, no money, no budget, and just, uh, but you know, you just kind of have a feeling that you need to be doing a better stewardship of your content. You can sit down at your dining room table for two hours, three, four hours, and um, come up with a sketch. You know, just like a cocktail nap and sketch of your content strategy. Kind of consider each of those considerations, each of those stages that I set out. You don't have to go into all the detail. And a lot of times you'll realize, oh yeah, I've thought about that. I know my values and you know my why and, and all that kind of stuff. You can. There's a lot of work that may already have been done, but in any case, even just giving a few hours of attention to it, you can kind of sketch out the content strategy. I'm working right now on a workbook, you know, that I'll um, uh, probably sell to, to folks as like a like sort of a I don't know exactly how it'll manifest, but because I need to prototype it with some people first, but um, oh, which kind of gets back to this this whole idea of DIY content strategy is only three months old in my mind. So apologies if it's, if it's not completely fleshed out yet. But um, but anyhow, this you can and any of you are welcome to just take those steps and create a workbook that you can hand to your clients or or whatever. Um, if you want to jump on board, I think we're entering the kind of the golden age of content strategy. The more I talk to, I you know, like I mentioned, I joined the content strategy meetup uh, organizing team. Uh, as I talk to people in that world, and just content people in general, there's this sort of growing sense of excitement and enthusiasm about the field and the discipline. People are actually getting budgets, people are getting hired, there's content strategists appearing all over the place. Not always called that, by the way. Like at Google, they have a role called UX Writer, which looks exactly like the job description for a content strategist at Facebook. So, um, so anyhow, there's, there's kind of a, and you can also apply it as a consultant. That's probably the main way that happens in this world. Um, so as you could, you know, hang on your shingle as a consultant and, and do this, um, or partnerships. I've talked to a ton of agency people. Uh, this is my fourth WordCamp this fall, and where I've talked about this. And every time I end, I've ended up talking to agencies, who are like, yeah, we could, you know, anyhow, there may be opportunities there for me or other people who are experts in content strategy to partner with agencies and uh, help them incorporate like a content strategy practice. Um, inside their agency, or just even in your development and design practices, however, however you articulate it. Um, one last thing I want to talk about, oh, perfect, with my remaining five minutes, I think I can do this in less than five minutes. Um, if you're tired of listening to old white people like me, um, you can help us on the speaker training and diversity outreach team. Uh, that's one of the things I do in the WordPress community. Work with Jill Binder up in um, Vancouver, and we're doing. We're, so, anybody in here organize word camps or meetups? I see one meetup organizer. <laughs> yeah. So, anybody who organizes meetups or word camps or any kind of event where you're gathering people together, we've got a bunch of resources about how to encourage uh, just you know get more voices into the um, into the community. Um, just go to diversespeakers.info. And like I said, there's more information about DIY content strategy at this. Uh, so thanks much. Yeah, we have got a few minutes for Q and A. Any questions? I yes, let's see. Oh wait, can we use the mic? Or do we have a yeah. mic? Or there's a mic over there. Because I know they're recording this for WordPress.tv. Oh. So. Um, uh, it's a good question. Yeah, if you that way people can hear your question and not rely on me to. So if people have questions, if you could line up by the oh, mic. Oh, oh. Yeah. I was bringing over her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to pass it? Pass it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, oh. here. Do we have a room person who can run the okay. Are you volunteering? The I guess I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I was wondering about um, architecture mm -hmm. uh, in relation to content strategy. Were you including that in your thoughts of Strategy? You mean like information architecture? I'm talking about navigation. Oh, navigation. Oh, yeah. Well, that I would lump that in information oh, architecture. I mean, that's a, yeah, to, to me, that's a subfield of that discipline. So uh, but navigation. Good. Yeah, and uh, so you mean like uh, things about like labeling? Usability. And, yeah. Findability. Things, exactly. Things. Discoverability, findability, um, usability, accessibility. It's all, all part those of the content things. strategy. It should all be baked into your content strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions?
I see one way in the back. Okay. Thanks for the Bible. I just thought I get my 10,000 steps. <laughs> Um, don't exactly know how to phrase this, but I, I really like your methodology. It seems to play well with slightly larger companies that can have a management process. I don't know if there are any other solopreneurs in the room, but as I've been watching the world of content over the past five years, I've realized we're going under because there are so many opportunities to be strategic and get your message out, but we also have a job to do, and we're the only one who's doing it. So is there a way that you would adopt, adapt your methodology when you're dealing with micro-businesses? Absolutely, that's the top, that's the very first thing on my agenda because all my friends are like massage therapists and psychotherapists and independent web developers and uh, that's the very first group because, and that's sort of been my, from the get-go, I've always hung out with the big guys but I've always, all my friends have always been the little guys and so figuring out how to funnel those practices into actionable, that's the whole point. This checklist is the first draft. And like I said, the first product I created, the first, I don't know, manifestation of this in sort of a, a actionable way will be exactly addressed to that, to the small solopreneur, solopreneurs, independent professionals. Um, and um, I think you can hit each of those, you, I think it's important to tick off each of those activities. Um, but you don't need a staff of 12. <laughs> you need, yeah. You're not going to have 12 UX researchers helping you on your content research. Right. Well, if I was coaching someone, I would probably say, based on my own experience, add a category to your list called take away half of it. Because yeah. we end up with no time and feeling so super stretched because all the things that we could do are marvelous. But somebody has to speak reality to us. Yes. No, I push back a little bit on this because I think each of those things, I thought a lot about this list before I created it. I think it's important to at least consider each of those items on there. It might be a five-minute dismissal of it. You just say, no, nah, I know enough about that, or, you know, as an as a overstressed solopreneur, you know, tax to the limit, I got no time for that, but I've thought, I've given it a microsecond of thought. So I would argue that you still want to consider those things, but you're absolutely right, and that's, like I said, that's my first project is to get this down to like, what's the, you kind of envy the minimum viable product, you know, out of the startup world, what's the minimum viable content strategy um, you can come up with to help your little tiny business? Maybe a quick one? Okay, one more quick question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's where? Oh, wait, yeah, if you can wait for my thanks. It's not really a question as much as a suggestion with what you're doing. As you're doing this, um, I would say it would be really nice if we could look at your site and see a list of people who know how to do your methodology that we could contract with. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just made but it. But I know. So. <laughs> it's a short list at this point. But you're making, yeah. no, but I, you're yeah. making a workbook. I'm saying yeah. down the road, you're making a workbook. It would be a really yeah. well, great no, option. Yeah, and that's something that if any of you grab this and run with it, let me know. I'll promote you all over the place on my website and in my talks and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that idea. And that, and that kind of goes back, I hope you were all at Bridget's uh, keynote this morning. This is a community, you know, and that's my intent with this is like, I just made some discoveries, sharing it now, now I want us all to connect with one another, connect the dots, figure out better ways to do it. I mean, you could charge us. Can I? Oh, oh that's a good idea. <laughs> can I she add? said, you can charge us, and I'm like, well, okay. Can I have one other quick thing? The yes. one thing I didn't see on there, I, I wear both hats as a micro entrepreneur, and I also work with a team um, at, at my day job, and you don't have anything about planning for sunsetting or how you get the content off. And I think that that's really important when well, you talk that, about that. I kind of talked a little bit about that, the revise and remove content. And yeah. Jerry McGovern's thing about 90% come off, yeah. Because, and that's something that'd be hard, if you're a content creator, it can be so hard to let go. There's this saying in editorial word, kill your darlings. <laughs> you know, it's like that favorite, like a novelist has this beautiful turn of phrase, and the editor goes, that doesn't have anything to do with this story. You know, and that's a that is uh, apropos of what you're just saying. Like, yeah, if it doesn't, if it's not helping your customers accomplish what they came to your website for, that's a horrible note to end on. <laughs> Thanks. A little more. Thank you. A different one. Thank you. There's actually a job title for that. It should be a separate person from the content creator, and that is the executioner. You should go out there looking at the strategy and saying, we will now. Execute these maybe. Yeah. I think yeah. Jerry McGovern would gladly accept that label for what he does, the content executioner. Yeah. You said uh, chief somebody. Oh, chief content officer. I'm making this up. I, I mean, know, it's a role that exists. But. Uh, this 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.